I can tell you something else I'm very proud of. Back in 04, one of our state representatives, or then state representatives, Talma Teflin, took a Ugandan woman's baby. She's an immigrant here, and she, they had her baby. That was in 04. And, she, they, and he hired the most prominent family lawyer in Texas, or at least that's what I was told. And I got her her baby back. I, when I took the case for free, because I just, I'm a single mom, and I can't even imagine someone stealing my child from me and then lying on me, saying I'm a bad mom and I left my child with them, when they took the baby and then didn't allow her access to the baby and took the baby to Austin, so they were there with the baby all the time. So he had all these legislators who were going to testify that every time they saw them, they had the baby and the mom left the baby, even though they don't know how they got the baby. And um, I remember there was a, this one black lawyer, and she said to me, you know who their lawyer is, uh, Harry Tindall. And I said, so he bleeds just like me. That's right. And the law is what the law is, and you don't get to go just take somebody's baby because you have more money than them. That's not how the world works. And they wanted to save the baby from being black. They, they, in their affidavit, they filed with the court. It said everyone knows that young black boys have problems going into adulthood without going to prison. And uh, the dad was Nigerian and the mom was Ugandan. And they, uh, in their application, in their affidavit, they said that the parents are going to take the baby to Nigeria. I mean, come on now. And they, they were trying to save him from being black. And they actually changed his name uh, to a name uh, that was, they, he was named after one of the people in their family. And um, when we got the baby back, he didn't even know his true name. Um, and he was actually afraid whenever he saw black people. So I don't know what, because Harry Tim, I mean, because Talma Cheflin is a white man. So I don't know what they did to that. When we got him back, he was 19 months old. But when he saw black people, he would cower. So it was really, um, but I was very proud to get her her baby back. And she said, Miss Chalanda, she said, my baby's not going to remember me. I said, oh, yes, sweetie, he's going to remember you. And I just wish everyone could. Um, have been there to see this mother reunited with her child who was stolen from her. Um, so I I love those David versus Goliath fights. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. You know, um, Gen X Talks Your News um, is dedicated, it's an inspiration from the victims of Schlumberger. And when you, when you say Goliath, you know, that's who I think about because that's the primary reason that I started the show. It was just to give all people a chance to come on and speak the truth. And so it was a way of healing. And see, I, I feel, in my opinion, through communication, uh, it's, a, it's a vehicle of releasing pain. It's a, it's a vehicle of a process of healing. Because it's just like, for example, if you were an alcoholic, um, if you didn't admit you had the problem, then you could not heal. I agree. And so that's why right now, you know, the victims of Slumber Day, they're fighting Goliath out there. And I want them to know if they hear this story, your story and testimony, I call it, I mean, and, and still you've had all this phenomenal success. You overcame those, those devils that tried to stop you, those demons, because that's what they were. And, and you said to that demon, no more. It's not going to take me down. You would not be well, you need to come Well, you need to come out and cover the Survivor Challenge. We, I tried yeah, to be diverse uh, on, the, um, on the show. They're not always real diverse, so you don't see a lot of people of color, uh, which is sad. But I made sure that I invited, you know, people of all creeds and colors because I wanted – the people that I brought down to reflect society as best I could. Now, mind you, I didn't have many options because they don't get a lot of, you know, black women. You know, you might see like really, and I hate to say this because the media, I mean, they're very basic. They want to put eye candy on so people will want to watch it. And that's just real. I mean, even videos are like that. But so you don't see them with a lot of like really, um, uh, Normal I guess like that, in, the right. So the yeah. So I but I've <laughs> invited I invited Vesepia Robinson. If you don't know, Vesepia is the first black woman 
to win Survivor. She won Survivor Marquesas. I'm an Alpha Cap Alpha, and, and I'm just saying that only because I'm about to tell you that Vesepi is a Delta. <laughs> she's a good friend of mine. But she's, like I said, the first black person to win on Survivor. So she's coming down. Well, and so I'm very thankful for that. Too. <laughs> I think huh? one too. I think Which one are you? One. Okay. And then um, Uchenna and Joyce, they won on Amazing Race, All Stars. And so they're coming down. Um, James Clement, who is on Survivor China and Survivor Fans vs. Fave, he's the black guy that's the grave digger. Um, he, voted, he was voted fan favorite two seasons in a row. He's the only person to ever be that popular. Um, James is coming down as well. Then we have Rory Freeman. Rory's from Iowa. <laughs> and Rory's a, a guy who he, he thinks he should have burned down the camp because he was considering it. So I have tried to make sure that I invite people who appeal or who we can connect with. Um, I have, uh, but I have, I didn't hear you. Natalie, Natalie Bolton and... Uh, Natalie, yeah, Natalie, Natalie is from Houston. She actually graduated from Channel View, but she lives in L.A. and she's on, but she's on this, not the one that's on now, but the one previous to it on Fans vs. Saves. So I have people from all over. I mean, I've tried my hardest to make sure that I got a representative group and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to raise money for two great nonprofits. I'm very, very, very proud to be able to help try to figure out a cure for SIDS because no one should have to go through what my sister and her family went through. It is devastating for a perfect, it's like taking your baby to the babysitter while you're at work, you come back and your baby is dead. I can't even describe, I had to shut my law practice down because my sister, when Ujana first died, wanted to go be with her daughter. And I needed to make sure that my sister didn't do anything crazy like that. And so, investigate, investigate as if something was done to the, to the baby and you're mm -hmm. already in a, in a position, you just lost your child. I mean, to do right. some type of investigation, you know, homicide. That right there. <laughs> I mean, no, it's a homicide investigation. Because mm. no one wants to believe that a baby dies. Somebody had to kill him. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they start trying to create stuff a lot of times. It's, uh, it's amazing. I didn't, again, I had no idea about any of this until my niece died. And then I learned a whole lot real fast. It's hard so, enough, you know, when the parents have to bury the children. You know, the opposite is it should be the reverse, but we don't want anybody to pass. But the thing about it is when you bury a child, I mean, imagine, you know, this is a child that you love and care for. And on top of that, for someone to come and tell you that you did something to your child. You killed them. Hmm. I mean, they talk yeah, to you like you killed them. You're right. And, 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 you know, my, my, my sister and her husband are planning people. My sister waited. I think my sister was 28 when she had Ujana. She and her husband waited. You know, they dated. They did a single thing for a while, and they got married, and then they spent time together, you know, as a couple because you don't want to just start having kids. So with my sister, it wasn't like an accident. So, and, and my sister took a picture of her child every week. I mean, she made me feel like a neglectful parent because, I took pictures of my child like every year, you know. Yeah. So for Jonna to just be gone was incredible. And if you look on the website, www.ujanaconleyfoundation.org, that's Ujana Conley Foundation. You probably can spell Conley and Foundation, but Ujana, again, is U-J-A-N-A. -A. If you go on there and look at that picture, there's a picture of Ujana on that website she took three days before she died she was she took she was took a picture as an angel so she's got wings and golden wings as a matter of fact and every time i look at that picture i just wonder if god wasn't you know trying to tell us something but to give my sister some peace you know that that's where she is and that's what she's doing but um well i mean 